best. Okay. Um, this is uh, what we're going to learn today. Um, so it's called uh, momentum. Uh, and momentum method is currently arguably uh, most widely used trick in uh, optimizing machine learning models. Um, the reason is this. So let me add Y momentum. The answer to this question is largely within this steel optimization. Is the reason is the reason is mostly we cannot afford second order method such as Newton. In uh, in four four nine in in four four nine, uh, we learned that uh, um, the quadratic convergence is so fa so much faster than uh, linear convergence. Um, So we can only use first order method such as uh, uh, stochastic gradient descent method with mini batch. Okay. Um, so how do we increase? So the question is how do we increase? Um, how do we make the convergence of our gradient descent algorithm faster. So that's a question we try to answer today. If we recall, so first, so then how is uh, today's topic? Okay. So first let's review. Um, so first let's review some of uh, um, So review of uh, 449, that is uh, um, how fast is the convergence of a gradient descent that, uh, um, so let's recall, we, we think about like a simple, so simple GD for, uh, for quadratic function. Okay. All right. And this W may be a matrix, maybe a uh, maybe a uh, vector. So as long as the dimension matches, this is still a quadratic function. And uh, so for simplicity, I'm just using this W is an Rn so that um, this is a quadratic function in Rn and we know that so this is our gradient descent method and it is the same thing as Originally, we had a B, uh, B transpose W here. Today, we even just got rid of that. And we know that this is a quadratic function and it has its quadratic function. And this is like, a, this is pretty much like one half X square. The minimum is uh, zero, the local minimum, as well as is global minimum, uh, which has a local minimum which is also a global minimum has a local minimum of w equals zero okay so this is our gradient descent and we know that w star so wk subtract w star equals wk subtract 
W star subtract alpha Q, WK subtract W star, and we have just worked out the error equation that is our identity matrix subtract alpha Q. So this is our error equation. And last, so last semester, we analyzed this error equation using the eigenvalue method. So we proved some theorem that the two norm of the, uh, for example, this is a matrix and the two norm induced two norm of a matrix. So we apply uh, cauchy schwarz inequality. Uh, we will get something like this. So all of these norms are two norm. Uh, and the last, last semester we proved some astounding like a theorem about this two norm of a matrix. That is, uh, uh, this is, uh, so this is a maximum eigenvalue. So the two norm, so let's recall. So recall from 449, that is a matrix is two norm it is called the spectral radius. Um, is a spectral radius of this matrix. Okay. So uh, it's actually the maximum, maximum eigenvalue. Of actually, it's, it should be maximum eigenvalue, abs maximum of absolute value of eigenvalue. Okay. So uh, where this lambda is an eigenvalue of I minus alpha Q, okay? And then what happens is, uh, um, so we basically, um, the maximum of lambda is nothing but uh, um, it's nothing but uh, equals maximum lambda of i to n of one of maximum. So let me write down. So it's still if q has lambda i i from one to n as eigenvalues. Then identity matrix minus alpha Q has eigenvalue as eigenvalues. Okay. So then the maximum eigenvalue of this one is whatever the maximum of that. So, uh, so the spectral radius of this matrix is a maximum of i from one to n and uh, um, one minus alpha lambda i. And then we learn that um, because this function, because this function is like, a, so this function is pretty much continuous function. Uh, with respect to this lambda, if we treat this lambda as um, as a very a, a continuous variable, then its maximum is achieved at the boundary. Okay, so we we just use some uh, uh, recycle some calculus result of the maximum of a continuous function um, that's either at a critical point, but you know at this. Because this one, this is absolute value. It looks like this. The critical point is like its lowest point. So the where the derivative does not exist. So its maximum is achieved at the boundary. And we have, this is nothing but uh, just among these two numbers. So I'm not sure if we still remember this formula. That is, Okay, the spectral radius is um, is basically whatever the maximum of that. Okay, 
So then what happens is um, we can solve like uh, to um, so we can solve such that these two are equal. So for example, we choose alpha so that these two are equal. So we choose alpha equals two divided by lambda max plus lambda min as step size or learning rate. Then we have um, the max. So these two are the same. So the maximum, so it doesn't matter which one we take and uh, we can, for example, if we choose that, so if we choose alpha, this implies the spectral radius, which is also the two norm of this matrix is, so we have learned it's lambda max subtract lambda mean and lambda max subtract lambda min is kappa subtract one divided by kappa plus one. And kappa is called our condition number. of Q, okay. So we learned that our method, so our method will have a slowdown convergence. If uh, um, like, uh, so basically, so what does this imply? So what is um, how? So the question is how does kappa translates to to actual optimization problem so last semester we basically we say that oh it's because if we have kappa it means our problem scales differently in different axes it means we cannot choose a single parameter gradient descent so that, you know, so it's like a, we, we, we cannot expect to choose a single number as our learning rate or step size that will get very fast convergence. So for example, then we propose some remedy that is a, a steepest descent problem. For example, for steepest descent problem, we have to solve a line this, uh, so we do some line search. It's like we, we have to solve some. Um, so we have to do this um, matrix vector multiplication. We figure out a step size we should take in that specific step. So the answer is, uh, um, um, so that is when, so the answer is, okay. How does this translate to optimization is a single learning rate or step size. Okay. Is not good. Okay. Not question mark. It's not good. So in 449, we proposed several remedy to that. So in, in 449, we proposed, for example, the stochastic, sorry. This is the steepest descent. Okay, so for example, and conjugate gradient. And lastly, we did uh, this uh, um, a bit about quasi Newton, but uh, we didn't go in too detail about it. So these are uh, the proposed remedy to this problem of a single step size won't serve us good. Um, however, <laughs> we have a we have a but. So uh, we have a but here. So but. All three method. are too costly.
for for machine learning models. I mean, especially for the big machine learning models, for example. Um, so right right now uh, we're learning like. I think, for example, in math class, okay, so in math class, for example, in college, we're learning something like, uh, you know, people uh, invented 200 years ago, for example, let, let, let me make this example. I know some of us are the grader of our uh, 217 class, which is ODE. Um, and, uh, and let me just say this, o ODE is like, uh, the thing we learned was discovered, for example, Two, two or three hundred years ago by Fourier, Laplace, Gauss, etc. But you know, but let's look at the CS department. Okay, so CS department is always learning things from two years ago. For example, someone proposed a new algorithm, and uh, three years later, it's in the textbook. So this is CS department. Um, so right now, what we present, okay. So what we present is in at least in recent 10 years. Okay, so it's a, it's a huge improvement from our ODE class um, is people start realize these methods, no matter it's steepest or decent, steepest or decent, we have to do something like, uh, something like this. So um, let me write. For steepest and decent, we have to compute this matrix vector multiplication. Even that is too costly for machine learning model because we have sometimes millions of parameters or even billions of parameters. And which means this becomes already gradient decent is very expensive, no matter this. And think about conjugate gradient. Conjugate gradient need to, needs to compute this, okay, at every iteration. Uh, and I mean, so conjugate gradient essentially has the same cost where the steepest descent. So because at every iteration, uh, we'll, we'll basically we'll do a grand Schmidt is essentially involving computing this. So quasi Newton is a bit more costly, but all these three are approximately the same computational complexity and they are too costly for machine learning models. Okay, so how about so here comes the savior, okay, is momentum. So, okay, um, why, why I'm saying it's a savior is, uh, is because, so it's a, it's a very cheap, keep this in mind. It's very, so why it's savior is because, uh, so. Here we have. So if we are interviewing for a machine learning job and uh, if the interviewer was the mathematician and ask us, okay, explain momentum to me. So here is a too long, didn't read version. The momentum is a cheap, okay. Computationally cheap. Um, let me add this. It's a computationally cheap method to increase the rate of convergence greatly. To increase the rate of convergence greatly. Okay. I mean, I, I know some of us won't um, be pursuing a coding related career. Um, but the idea, okay, the idea, this idea of adaptably, um, like adapt our strategy based on the feedback from the problem is kind of important. So because we, we, so in mathematics, we could not, ex especially in applied mathematics, in pure mathematics is a kind of different story, but in applied mathematics, we cannot expect one method rule them all. Okay, so we're not, you know, like uh, writing novels. So we're solving 
um, actual problems. So every problem has its uh, um, specific nature. So especially um, in the gradient descent. Okay. Um, so for example, when when why we want this is like we iterate earlier. So uh, the condition number is big. Um, sorry, it's big. So the condition number kappa is big. How does this translate to uh, to machine learning model? Is the model the loss function? Okay. Um, is highly curved. with respect to certain parameters but pretty flat okay in others this is perfectly possible okay this is perfectly possible and uh, um for example, simplest example, okay, so in calculus is think about this. So a two dimensional function, okay. So let's say we have a uh, think about this. This function, I mean, um, Actually, we learned this function back in uh, 449 is we talk about this, okay. Um, so the major axis is like, uh, so this one is like super, um, so the major axis of X axis is like super long and this is Y, okay. Um, and when we apply, so when we are here, bam, so we reach the minimum. When we are here, one step, we get down to the minimum. However, if we are here, so we'll do this. And uh, um, it's kind of bad, okay. So, um, and we wanna avoid that, okay. Um, and so the idea is to introduce this moment. Okay. So the question, so can we, okay. Like I said, the idea, it's all about the idea. Um, I mean, if we present the method, it's pretty, it's pretty simple. I mean, the mathematics is like, a. I believe all of us can understand the math in 1B when we are in high school. Okay. But the idea, it's all about the idea is, in, especially in applied math, is can we use, so this is, you know, applied mathematician being cheap. So uh, can we tell the difference between the curve, um, the, the highly curved and flat uh, gradient using a cheap procedure. Uh, of course, if we can, if we can take, if we can take Hessian, for example, so the Hessian matrix, okay, of this one. So if we take Hessian, we take second derivative, uh, we'll get the first diagonal is like, uh, uh, it's, this is like one, this is like 200. Um, I mean, for, for this one, the taking Hessian is easy. Then we know that, oh, it scales like uh, uh, one in this direction and 200 in this direction. Um, and even, even if uh, we have different eigenvalues, um, it's pretty straightforward to compute the eigenvalues. 
But the thing is, you know, the machine learning practitioner they can't afford、um, computing hashing, and、uh, so what we want to do is we want to propose a cheap,、um, so a, a cheap procedure to tell where is which one is flat, which one is uh, uh, is steep. Okay, so let's let's、uh, roll back to、um, some. Some one D heuristics. Okay. The one D heuristics we think about this quadratic function. So let's、uh, borrow, you know, our old friend. This is y equals. Yes. We think about just applying、um, simple gradient descent to it. So. This x star is zero, right?、Um, if we apply gradient descent, which we shouldn't, you know, for this simple case, but I just want to、uh, uh, illustrate、uh, the idea.、Um, this one's gradient is just x, so、uh, this one is alpha, like、uh, y prime, evaluated at. So it is x k plus one equals. One minus、uh, alpha. Yeah, let me let me still write this、um, so it's x k subtract alpha k. Okay. Okay. So when to tell、uh, there is a flat gradient and curved gradient is use this step size. Okay. So if we choose our step size too big, for example, the gradient here、uh, is positive. Okay, so and y prime is, you know, there's there's a decreasing here. Okay, and、uh, the gradient is positive here,、uh, negative here. A simple indicator to indicate whether our step size is good is. Whether they are reversing signs, okay. So if from iteration number k to iteration、uh, number k plus one, if they have different signs. The alpha is likely too big. Why? We have positive gradient, right? And we wanna we wanna go here, so we wanna go here. But if we are at kth iteration, we are here. We still have positive gradient. The next iteration, we are here. We have negative gradient. You know, so this kind of thing. Uh, this jumping back and forth. That's an indication we chose our gradient. I'm sorry, we chose our step size、uh, too big. Okay, so it's like、uh, we're going too far. So we want to go here, but we we're going too far. We go here. Okay, so、uh, it's like、uh, we went too far. That's bad. Somehow, if we are still, you know. The same sign, okay. So, however, so if the gradient at the kth iteration at and the k plus one's iteration are the same sign, okay. So, have the same sign. It is also possible that our step size is chosen too small. We don't know. Okay. So have the same sign.、Uh, it is possible. Alpha is too small. Okay. But but we we don't know. Okay. So we don't know so far. So before we introduce uh, uh, this uh, 
just thing. So for example, we went too far, we go here. If we, uh, if we choose a small learning rate, we may, you know, still here, but we're still far away uh, to this uh, local minimum. Okay. So how to tell, um, how to tell the difference? Okay. Um, so proposal. So here is our proposal. The proposal is two things. If the gradient reverse reverses, so because um, the idea of the gradient reverse sign uh, in the multi-dimension is the gradient reverse reverses direction. For example, uh, at k iteration, our gradient pointing to this direction, but k plus one iteration, our gradient suddenly points to the opposite direction, or some some direction that's you know like almost the opposite. So if our gradient reverses direction. And we want to make this, uh, we want to make our steps smaller. So make step smaller. So if the gradient remains in the same direction, we make the step bigger. So, I mean, this is a uh, make this, uh, actually it's the step. So make a single step. So make the step bigger. It's that simple. The, uh, the idea when, uh, when being presented, it's extremely straightforward because we just want to adapt. Like uh, we adapt our algorithm to different problems instead of choosing a single uh, parameter. So this is the idea of applied math is we treat everything adaptively. Um, there is no like a, a single rule, rules them all, this kind of thing. Um, so how do we add? So here is our formula. This is a momentum. with momentum constant beta. So it is, um, it's WK plus one equals WK. So far I'm still um, with our uh, gradient descent. Okay, so um, this is our step size. And we add an extra momentum term that uses, okay, previous step information. So, so beta is a constant. So beta is a is a constant normally in zero to one. Okay. So in practice, it's um. Uh, so if we read a uh, PyTorch's package, the default momentum is chosen uh, as zero point nine, and in a more advanced algorithm like Atom or Atagrad, uh, the momentum is, uh, this beta is chosen as 0 0.999. And uh, so how, how do we interpret this? This is actually the gradient from previous step. Okay. If we think about this, uh, where's my red? Okay, here. This is exactly the gradient from previous step, right? Even without, this is a step from, this is previous step, okay. If, the pre, if in the previous step, we don't have any momentum. So, so if at iteration, K minus one, there is no momentum, no momentum. Then this is exactly 
alpha times gradient at the previous iteration, okay? Now the idea is straightforward. We use previous iterations information to correct our current iterations uh, grade. So And this is our um, this is our uh, this is basically uh, the idea. So think about this. Uh, sorry, this is negative. We have a negative sign, right? So uh, my bad. So this is a negative gradient. Okay. If so, this is negative gradient of previous step. Okay. If this gradient is the same as the, so if previous steps gradient is the same as the current gradient, uh, the current iterations gradient, we move a little bit further in that direction, okay? If this is in reverse, we move a little bit less further in that direction. So when, if the gradient reverses sign or reverses the direction, it's usually a bad indication of our method hitting some noise ball. For example, so uh, if we draw our loss function, the gradient reverses the sign is an indication like we are doing this, okay? We want to reach here, but the gradient reverses sign is is any indication we're doing this. Okay, so this is uh. So let me just draw this thing here. Okay, so this is a case when gradient reverses signs between. iterations okay and we want to avoid we want to avoid this case so uh the intuition is uh um is uh if okay so if this has same direction has approximately same direction with our current negative gradient, then we move a little further in that direction. So this is the idea. I mean, if uh, if it's in the opposite direction, we just move a little bit less further. Uh, and uh, um, and it is it it's also has a name. So also named. So also named. Uh, this method actually um, actually was invented so many years ago by a by a a, a, a guy named the Poliak. So. Uh, so it has another name, it's called heavy ball method. So by this math, by this mathematician, I'm not sure uh, what, which country uh, he is originally from. I think he came to United States and eventually because of World War II. Um, so it's also called the heavy ball method. Okay. And now it's, uh, so let's let's try to analyze this. So this is our momentum. Okay, let's try to analyze. So analysis in one D case, and we choose we choose a very simple example. Okay, uh, we just choose this, this example. Um, this, this will be served as our basics um, to understand uh, the moment how momentum works in uh, 
like a n-dimensional case. Um, if we apply our momentum formula, this is whoops, this is x k plus one. Uh, e so uh, local minimum is zero, and this lambda is greater than zero. Okay, so uh, so this function is uh, our nice quadratic function. The global minimum is the same as local minimum, and uh, it's zero minimum point. So we have x k subtract alpha lambda x k plus beta xk subtract xk minus one. So then um, if we combine the same terms, so we have xk, 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 um, we have, this is one minus alpha lambda plus beta, xk subtract beta xk minus one. Okay. How do we how do we analyze this method? Is we use the following trick? Um, because we know that we 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 know that um, for standard gradient descent, um, this one converges in linear rate. Okay. So linear convergence, so let, let's uh, write here, linear convergence is follow, that is, uh, let me use E. So epsilon K plus one is alpha epsilon K uh, with, with this alpha less, you know, absolute value of alpha less than one. So uh, essentially we'll have this epsilon so epsilon k is alpha to the kth power times epsilon zero, something like that, okay? So essentially we're getting a geometric series if we have a uh, linear convergence. So linear convergence, we have a geometric series. Um, leveraging that, because we know original gradient descent has a linear convergence. So now what we do is we let, we let x k equals uh, beta k divided by two. So beta to the k divided by two power times uh, v sub k. Okay, so this is, uh, so, th so this is a trick to analyze So now if we write explicitly everything down, it is beta k plus one divided by two, z k plus one equals one minus alpha lambda uh, plus beta, beta k divided by two, z k subtract uh, beta times beta k minus one divided by two, z k minus one. Why we wanna make this substitution is because we can leverage this term. So beta minus this, it's exactly this, okay. So now we write everything. Um, so we, we, if we combine everything, um, so we, we divide this thing here and here, this will be canceled, okay. So uh, we have, this is z sub k plus one. And uh, uh, if we divide this here, uh, we'll basically we'll get beta raised to the one half power on the denominator. So we have, this is square root of beta and one plus beta minus alpha lambda, uh, Z K minus Z K minus one. And now, um, I'm not sure if we have learned because uh, there there are not lots of uh, uh, numerical analysis class in the uh, Washu. Um, I I should really uh, I should really have taught you guys uh, this uh, this idea. So I'm not sure if it's learned in <coughs> if it's learned in linear algebra or not. It's the idea of orthogonal polynomials. 
what we do is we let u equals u equals this with an extra set two factor uh, here. Then what happening is uh, is we have a recurrence relation. Of this okay so this is a recurrence relation recurrence relation um this one is a recurrence relation of z invariable u. So this is like a z is a function uh, of u. And we can iteratively, we can iteratively um, getting, so z is like, a, so z of k is like t of k of u. Okay. So the solution to this recurrence relation will be, uh, the answer um, to how this momentum accelerated the convergence. But we will leave it to next class. So Friday, we'll continue this topic instead of a, a coding lecture. Uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll code this. Um, so, and then the homework. So uh, then we will have our theory homework, which is uh, showing some equivalence form of this uh, uh, momentum. And uh, um, so essentially we'll continue next time and uh, we'll show that this is an orthogonal polynomial. So the answer is Chebyshev polynomial. So the K is the family of code Chebyshev polynomial. And we'll continue next time on this. Okay. So I'll stop recording.